nikiwa kule kwenye gari na sijui kama tutafika mahali mtu Mungu anataka tufike leo lakini niko tayari kusikia kutoka kwa Mungu tusimame sisi wote twende katika su, kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana sura ya saba kuanzia mstari wa saba hadi 13 I think he's fixing it. Oh, okay. All right. sura ya saba, mstari wa tatu, hadi saba. Okay, that's better. Beginning with verse 13. Kuanzia mstari wa 13 hadi 17. And one of the elders answered saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sunlight on them any nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Ufunuo wa Yohana 7:13 hadi 17 akajibu mmoja wa wale wazee akiniambia, "Je, watu hawa walio walio watu hawa waliovikwa mavazi meupe ni akina nani na wametoka wapi?" Nikamwambia, "Bwana wangu wajua wewe." Akaniambia, "Hao ndio wanatoka katika dhiki ile iliyo kuu nao wamefua mavazi yao na kufanya meupe katika damu ya mwana kondoo. Kwa hiyo wako mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha Mungu nao wanamtumikia mchana na usiku katika hekalu lake na yeye aketie katika kiti cha enzi atanda hema yake juu yao. Hawataona njaa tena wala hawataona kiu tena wala jua halitawapiga halita wala hiari iliyo yote. Kwa maana huyo mwana kondoo aliye katikati ya kiti cha enzi atawachunga naye atawaongoza kwenye chemchemi za maji yenye uhai na Mungu atayafuta machozi yote katika macho yao. Mchungaji ikiwa utaweza kuomba. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Okay, forgive me for my shoes. My feet are swollen from all the traps. I know you guys consider these house shoes. But I don't have a choice right now. But I don't have a choice right now. But I don't have a choice right now. Kwa hivyo samahani. So back to our text. Tukirudi kwa somo letu. So we have a testimony. Tuko na ushuhuda. We are witnesses. Sisi ni mashahidi. And one day, na siku moja, we'll be the ones before the throne worshiping God. Tutakuwa ndio sisi tulio mbele ya kiti cha enzi tukimwabudu Mungu. And when God gave me that, that scripture. Mungu aliponipa andiko hilo. He spoke to me. Alininenea. And he said, "What are my people witnesses of?" Akauliza, "Watu wangu ni mashahidi wa nini?" Are we witnesses of good things? Je, sisi ni mashahidi wa mambo mazuri? Do we have a testimony? Tuna ushuhuda. Do we know how to encourage each other? Tunajua jinsi ya kutia moyo mmoja kwa mwingine. Do we know how to walk the way God wants us to walk? Tunajua jinsi ya kutembea vile Mungu anataka tutembee. And then he took me to Second Kings chapter 8. Na ikanipeleka katika Wafalme wa pili sura ni ya nane. Nitasoma mistari kadhaa kutoka hapo. Kwa sababu hiyo ndio nyama ya ujumbe. Kwa sababu wakati mwingine inabidi turudi nyuma ili kupata ushuhuda. Ili tuweze kuwa mashahidi. Jinsi vile iliyokaririwa katika matendo ya mitume moja nane Sisi wote tumeitwa kuwa mashahidi. Sisi wote tumeitwa kwenda. Wafalme wa pili nane mbili. Kuanzia mstari wa pili. For the Lord hath called for a famine and it shall also come upon the land seven years. 
And the woman arose and did after the same. Hang on. And the woman arose and did after the same. Of the man of God. And she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years' end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all. Let me say that again. The king said, Restore all, not part. Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Kwa falme wa pili nane moja hadi sita inasema basi Elisha alikuwa amemwambia yule mwanamke ambaye alimfufulia mwanawe akasema ondoka ukaende wewe na jamaa yako ukae hali ya hali ya kigeni ukawakoweza utakakoweza ukaa kwa sababu Bwana ameiita njaa nayo itakuja juu ya inji hii muda wa miaka saba akaondoka yule mwanamke akafanya kama alivyosema mtu wa Mungu akaenda yeye na jamaa yake akakaa katika inji ya Wafilisti miaka saba ikawa miaka saba ilipoisha yule mwanamke akarudi kutoka inji ya Wafilisti akatokea amlilie mfalme kwa ajili ya nyumba yake na shamba lake basi mfalme alikuwa akizungumza na Gehazi mtumishi wa Mungu mtumishi wa mtu wa Mungu akinena uniambie na kusihi mambo makuu yote aliyoyafanya Elisha ikawa alipokuwa katika kumwambia mfalme jinsi alivyomfua mtu aliyekufa tazama huyo mwanamke aliyemfufulia mwanawe alimlilia mfalme kwa ajili ya nyumba yake na shamba lake Gehazi akasema Bwana wangu mfalme huyu ndiye mwanamke na huyu ndiye mwanawe ambaye Elisha alimfufua na mfalme alipomuuliza yule mwanamke yeye akamweleza basi mfalme akamtokea akida akasema mrudishie yote aliyokuwa nayo na mapato yote ya shamba lake tangu siku aliposafiri hata leo tuongee kuhusu mwanamke huyu kwa dakika kibogo unaona yeye ndiye yeye na mumewe who prepared a room for the prophets waliandaa chumba kwa sababu ya nabii and elisha watched them na elisha akawatazama and he said what can i do for them akawauliza ni wafanyie nini and he realized they were older and didn't have any children na wakatambua ya kwamba walikuwa ni wazee na hawakuwa na watoto so he went to her akamwendea and he said you have a child akamwambia utakuwa na mtoto and she basically said don't tease me na akasema usinifanyie kejeli and he said you will have akasema utakuwa na mtoto kwa hivyo akapata mtoto. Miaka michache baadaye. Mwana huyo alikuwa kwenye shamba na babake. Na akapata kuumwa na kichwa. Kwa hivyo akarudi kwa mama. Akakaa kwenye mapaja ya mama. Kwa sababu mama anaweza kufanya hiyo bora zaidi, si kweli? Na alipokuwa ameketi kwenye mapaja ya mama, akafa. See his mother was that certain Shumanite woman. Unajua ule mama alikuwa ndiye yule mama mshunami. She knew what to do. Alijua cha kufanya. She took her baby. Akachukua mwanawe. And she laid him on the prophet's bed. Akamlaza kwenye kitanda cha nabii. And she went and got a donkey. Akaenda akachukua punda. And she rode it hard to the prophet. Na akaendesha huyo punda hadi kufikia nabii. And the prophet said to her Nabii akamwambia uh, Gehazi Amuulize ikiwa kila kitu kilikuwa sawa. Na alikuwa amefanya uamuzi. Haikujalisha ni nini kilitokea. Kulikuwa kuko sawa. Na ndivyo tunastahili kukua. Tunastahili tufanye uamuzi. Ya kwamba haijalishi maisha yetu ni mabaya kijizikana. Iko sawa. Kila kitu kiko sawa na nafsi zetu. Na jamii zetu. Watu ambao wako katika makanisa yetu. Wanapotazama mambo yakitokea katika maisha yetu mabaya. Kwa sababu mtu anapoaga wanaanza kuangalia. 
wanaangalia ili uweze kumwacha Mungu. See, when I got cancer, they thought I'd Unaona dada alipopata kansa walifikiria kwamba ataweza kurudi nyuma. Wakamtuma nyumbani aende kukufa wakafikiria atarudi nyuma. Wakati alipona wakafikiria atarudi nyuma. Binti yake alipoamua hataki uhusiano na yeye. Walifikiria atarudi nyuma. When my husband decided to kill himself. Mume wake alipoamua kujiua. They thought I'd backslide. Walifikiria kwamba atarudi nyuma. They didn't know my God. Lakini hawakumjua Mungu wangu. And I made up my mind. Na nilikuwa nimefanya uamuzi. Ya kwamba huo ni mwanzo. Ya kwamba nitasema. Nimebarikiwa. Sijalishi, haijalishi ni nguvu kiasi gani. Nimebarikiwa. You can be blessed. Una kubarikiwa. Haijalishi ni nini. Ni mambo ya kubadilisha mawazo. Ni kubadilisha mwenendo. Lakini tunastahili tujipeleke pale. Wakati mama huyo alienda akapanda yule punda alikuwa amefanya uamuzi katika mawazo yake mchungaji hata ingawa mwanao wa kiume alikuwa anaendelea kuwa baridi kila dakika wakati gehazi alimjia akasema yote yako sawa akasema yote yako sawa na jamii ni sawa na alipomwambia kwamba yule mtoto ni mgonjwa na nabii akatuma fimbo yake ili Gehazi awekelee juu ya ule mwana lakini ni mtoto wetu ikuwa wewe ni mtoto wangu kuja kama ni mtoto wangu ambaye ni mgonjwa Sitataka kile fimbo ya nabii Sitataka nusu Wakati nimesimama mbele ya nabii mwenyewe Sitaki fimbo yake nataka nabii mwenyewe aje aombe Nataka yule aninayejua ana nguvu na Mungu Sitaki vitu vya kubadili badala ya Unaona tutakaa. Mchungaji hawezi kuja. Na mtoto wako anaaga. Na samahani mchungaji. Unaweza kutuma dada yako au mtu mwingine. Lakini hauna imani ndani yao. Una imani ndani ya maombi yake. Anaweza kusimama aseme enda uende. Lakini nangojea wewe uje na mimi. Kwa sababu huyo ni mtoto wangu. Na kama angekuwa ni mtoto wako, haungekaa uongojee kitu badala ya. Unataka kile kitu halisi. Kwa hivyo sisi ni watu wa jina la Yesu. Lazima tuwe na maisha ya maombi. Tuna nguvu na Mungu. Tunaweza kuwekelea mikono juu ya watu. Na wataweza kuponywa hapo kwa hapo. Haunihitaji. Hauhitaji dada Susan. Au mchungaji. Unaweza kumfikia Mungu. Wewe mwenyewe. Na Mungu atabadilisha hali zako. Lakini unaona tunakaa tu. Ni wakati watu wa Mungu waache kuketi tu hapo. Unahitaji nini kutoka kwa Mungu leo? Unataka kuwa katika yale mavazi meupe jinsi gani ukicheza katika kiti cha enzi? Ukuwa na ushuhuda wa hakika wa miujiza ambayo Mungu amefanya katika maisha yako. 
Unaona mimi niko katika upande wa urejesho. Kwa hivyo nitakwambia kile kinafanyika wakati hautulii. Kila mahali ambapo nimeenda. Mimi nimekuwa pamoja na yeye. Wakati wana watoto wake hawakuwa wanamuongelesha. Na bado hawajaingia kanisani. Lakini wako njiani ya kuja kanisani. Sijui bado Ningesimama kwenye madhabahu dunia mzima. Na ningesema siku moja mtoto wangu msichana atasimama kando yangu na siku moja kijana wangu atakuwa pande ile ingine yangu lazima tuone kile kisicho kuwepo kana kwamba kipo lazima tuanze kuona kama Mungu tunapoanza kuona kama Mungu tunatuache kutabiri mambo kama hayo tutaona yakitimia miaka miwili hapo nyuma binti yake alianza kumwongelesha tena na akarejea nyumbani nilikutana na yeye miaka miwili imepita hapa Kenya alikuja kwenye huruma pamoja na yeye Mungu hajamalizana na yeye bado. Lakini wakati alikuwa hapa alikuwa msaada kwa huduma ya watoto. Kwa sababu alitaka kuja kuona mamake anafanya nini. Kwa hivyo usiniambie kuhusu Mungu ambaye hawezi. Sija kutana na yeye. Sijui huyo Mungu ni nani. Najua tu Mungu anayetenda ishara na miujiza. Ya kwamba unaposimama pale na hata uelewi. Unaweza kufanya kila alichokifanya. Waweza kuinua mikono yako. Na useme ingawa ataniua. Bado nitamtumainia. Kwa sababu kwa sababu iko sawa na nafsi yangu. Iko sawa na kisha msichana wake akapata mimba kwa sababu haungeweza kuwa na mtoto katika hali ya kawaida na kwa mie, miezi uh, juma 13 akapoteza wale mapaja ili tuvunja moyo so we've been waiting for a baby. And I have a great miracle to tell you. Na kuna muujiza mkuu wa kuambia. I can tell you that when the court system says no. Wewe anaanza kukuambia kwamba wakati mahakama inasema hapana. Oh, I know a God. Najua Mungu. Who can walk through closed doors. Ambaye anaweza kutembea pita milango iliyofungwa na atingize misingi. Na afanye kile kisichowezekana kiweze kuwezekana. Anaweza kuongezea Na utafanya zaidi. Tumekuwa tukipigania huyu mtoto kwa mwaka mzima. Tukijaribu kumchukua. Wakafunga milango. Wangewaacha jamii ile ya kwanza imchukue. Ilivunja mioyo yetu. Nilipoenda nyumbani November mwaka uliopita niliingia katika nyumba yangu na wale, wakaleta ile uh, kitanda cha mtoto na wakaweka katika uh, living room yangu kile ningefanya ni kuketi pale na kulia kwa sababu nilikuwa naangalia ndoto ya mtoto wangu imeenda atujui jinsi vile hii itafanya kazi lakini nilianza kuomba nikamuuliza Mungu kwa nini? Lakini unaona Mungu alisikia maombi ya mama. Tuliombea mtoto wetu na Mungu alimleta katika maisha. December tukapata simu ya kwamba hali zimebadilika na ilibidi aenda katika boma nyingine 
na karibu ya kwamba wakili wa huyu mtoto alimwambia mama uh, binti yake kuwa tayari anakuja nyumbani kwako ilichukua miezi michache lakini wiki sita ba, uh, uliopita nikapata simu kabla ya kwenda ngambo kwa misheni nyingine tu atukuruhusiwa kuingia kwenye mahakama hatukuruhusiwa kupeana makaratasi lakini hiyo haitanishi kwa Mungu Mungu akikwambia usimame wima uone wokovu wa Mungu yeye anamaanisha simama wima uone wokovu wa Bwana Unahitaji nini leo kama majuma matatu yamepita nilienda nyumbani na tulikuwa tumepanga sherehe ya kukaribisha mtoto kule ngambo na nikaita marafiki wa karibu sila sasa ni karibu miaka miwili nikamuita aje kwangu na nikamshika katika mikono yangu and I said my arm toto who you I pray niliomba and the lord na bwana ameni patia ombi langu na nikaomba ombi la baraka kwa mtoto huyo na nikakaa na yeye usiku mmoja kabla nije hapa kwa sababu amevunjika moyo alimumizwa ni mtoto na walimuumiza na ningeweza kumfanya hata alale kwa hivyo niliweza kumbebeleza nikaanza kuimba nyimbo za zayuni nikaanza kuimba nikiona akienda kulala oh jinzi vile nampenda yesu jesus is the sweetest name i know yesu ndilo jina tamu zaidi ninalojua ndani liposhika mtoto huyu katika mikono yangu na nikaomba Mungu kwamba aweze kutoa ile kumbukumbu mbaya ili asiwe na kumbukumbu ya yale mambo magumu aliyopitia nikaomba Mungu aweze kumrejesha kwa kawaida unaweza kufanya hivyo Unaona sisi hatufanyi saa zingine kile Mungu anataka tufanye. Lakini kuvunjika moyo kutakuongoza uende huko. Kwa nini tunangojea tuvunjike moyo? Ikiwa tunajua mtu ambaye ana mtoto au mtu wa jamii ambaye anakufa. Bora tuziende tuwekelee mikono tuseme katika jina la Yesu pona. Na uangalie Mungu akimuinua kutoka kwa huyo ugonjwa. Hii yote inahusiana aje na Gehazi na mwanamke mshunami. Katika aya hii It's quite simple. Ni raisi. Because she prepared a room for the prophet. Kwa sababu aliandaa chumba kwa sababu ya nabii. She made room for ministry in her life. Alifanya au nafasi kwa ajili ya huduma katika maisha yake. Today we might say you need to make room to listen to your pastor. Leo tunaweza sema unastahili kufanya nafasi ili usikize mtuzaji wako. Submitting to your spiritual leadership. Kunyenyekea chini ya mamlaka ya kiroho. In a biblical manner. Katika njia ya kibiblia. She made room alitengeneza nafasi kwa kutengeneza chumba kwa hiyo alitengeneza ali chumba kwa ajili ya ishara na miujiza kutenda kazi katika maisha yake kupitia kwa neno la Mungu ukimzuia uh, Mungu anene na wewe ikiwa utazuia sahihisha ama marekebisho mchungaji anakufanyia ebu wadha kile kitafikiria kitatokea wewe umejizuia kutoka kwa ishara miujiza sitaki nizuiliwe kutoka kwa chochote nataka ikuje tu kwa kawaida na nataka tu ifanyike hiyo miujiza 
naweza kukuambia muujiza baada ya muujiza baada ya muujiza ambao Mungu amefanya kwangu mimi kibinafsi naweza kukuombea na hauta hizi chochote na Mungu atafanya kitu au naweza kukuombea na uponywe hapo kwa hapo lakini unaona imani yako lazima itoke kule kwenye shimo na ianze kuinuka mpaka hapa na wakati imani yako inainuka ishara na miujiza zitakutana na wewe unahitaji nini kutoka kwa Mungu utakuwa mashahidi utasema kile Mungu amefanya Biblia inasema kwa kurudia na kwa kurudia na kukurudia tena Biblia inasema na inatangaza Je, unatangaza kuvunjika moyo? Are you declaring you don't have money? Unatangaza kwamba hauna pesa? Are you declaring you're in a drought? Au unatangaza kwamba tuko katika kiangazi? Or are you out there walking those fields? Ama uko kule nje ukitembea kwenye mashamba? Say God. Ukisema Mungu? Reality says no rain. Ah, uh, hadi ya kawaida inasema hakuna mvua. My faith says you're going to send rain. Lakini imani yangu inasema unaenda kutuma mvua. My faith says my faith is Imani yangu inasema kwamba uh, mashamba yataanza kuchanua. Imani yangu inasema watoto wangu watakuwa sawa. Ma imani yangu inasema watoto wangu watampenda Mungu. Haijalishi kile wanasema kwangu. Lazima ujifunze kuongea vinavyostahili. Na utembee kwa imani na unapotembea na kutembea kuonea katika hali ya ukamilifu hakuna silaha itakayofanywa kinyume chako itaweza kuendelea hata kama itakuja kwa watoto wako na hiyo ni hadithi nyingine ambayo sitasema leo kwa sababu ninafagia tu vizuri haimaanishi ya kwamba sijapitia mambo mengi mara kadhaa wakati mmoja kule marekani kuna ile fridge wakati mwingine inafanya huwa inaacha kufanya kazi gari lake limewacha kufanya kazi wakati mwingine na shukuru Mungu ilikuwa ni wakati wa baridi ningeweka vitu vyangu nje kwenye barafu sikuwa na pesa za kulipa bili zangu lakini muujiza mmoja uliotendeka wakati huo Mungu alinena na mtu kule Mississippi na wakanituma kwa usiku pesa za kutosha ili kurekebisha gari moja Mungu anaenda kuleta si lazima ulipie kila unaistahili tu kufanya ni kuomba na usimame katika ahadi za Mungu na nitasimama katika neno la Mungu. Mungu ameniahidi Lakini ya kwamba hata kuona ukiombaomba mkate. Na anasema unaweza omba chochote katika jina lake. Na ufanye. Na anasema mahali wawili watatu wamekusanyika pamoja. Chochote chawezekana. Na Luka moja thelathini na saba inasema Kwa maana kwa Mungu Hakuna kisicho wezekana Kwa hivyo Mungu nasimama kwa ahadi lako Na kuamini kwa sababu ya yasiyo wezekana Kwa sababu ya na yasiyo wezekana Ni nafasi tu za kuleta miujiza kwa hivyo wakati unasimama katika hali isiyowezekana tambua ya kwamba ni nafasi ya muujiza kutendeka kwa hivyo kile tunastahili kufanya nataka nimalize kwanza Gehazi akamwendea yule mwanamke Elisha wakamwendea wakasema kwa sababu ulimshughulikia nabii There's going to be a seven year famine. Kutakuwa na njaa kwa miaka saba. And you need to leave. 
na unastahili uondoke unastahili uende katika nchi ya wafilisti na utarudi baada ya miaka saba na akarudi baada ya miaka saba akamwendea mfalme na Gehazi alikuwa kwenye mfalme na hebu tuongee kuhusu Gehazi kwa dakika moja just to get rich. Ya kwamba uweze kutumia tu neno la Mungu ili kuwa tajiri. Gehazi alikuwa na shida ya tamaa. He shouldn't have been talking to the king telling him of Elisha's miracles. Hakuwa naongea na mfalme akimwambia kuhusu miujiza ya Elisha. He should have been telling him the miracles that he was Angekuwa anaongea kuhusu miujiza ambayo alikuwa anafanya. Kwa lakini kwa sababu ya tamaa yake, aliingia katika shida. Hata hivyo alisimama pale kwa mfalme. Akimwambia kuhusu yule mkijana mdogo ambaye Elisha alifufua kutoka kwa wafu. And that woman's there. huyo akatokelezea. This is the mother. Na akasema huyu ndio mama wa huyo mtoto. Wa yule mtoto mdogo. And he says, and the little boy was standing beside her but he's bigger now. Na yule mtoto mdogo alikuwa amesimama kando ya mama yake lakini alikuwa mkubwa kidogo sasa. And he says actually that's the boy that was raised from the dead. Hakika huyu ndio yule mtoto aliyekufuliwa kutoka kwa wafu. And the king probably hadn't been listening too much to her. Na mfalme alikuwa anasikiza sana kutoka kwake. But all of a sudden, lakini kwa ghafla, he got interested. Akataka kusikiza. And when he got interested, alipochukua umakini, he sent somebody with her. Akatuma mtu na yeye. And everything that she had lost. Na kila kitu ambacho alikuwa amepoteza was restored. Kilirejeshwa. Including ukihusisha what she would have gotten the seven years that she was gone. Kile angepata kwa ile miaka saba ambayo alikuwa ameenda alirejeshewa. Amen. Amen. I'm here today. Amen. And pastor? Na mtungaji? I'm in restoration right now. Mimi niko katika urejesho wakati wa sasa. But I got some years of famine. Kwa maana nimekuwa na miaka ya njaa. God's restoring them as I speak. Mungu anarejesha ninaponena. God's doing the same. Na for this church. Mungu anafanya hivyo kwa kanisa lake. Do you believe God can do it? Unaamini Mungu anaweza kufanya hivyo? Je, unaamini uko na imani ya kwamba Mungu anaweza kukurejeshea kile ambacho ulipoteza? We have to believe God can do it. Lazima tuamini ya kwamba Mungu anaweza kufanya hivyo kurejesha. Acts 1:8 through 11. Matendo uh, moja, nane, hadi 11. It says Acts 1:8 through 11. Matendo ya mitume moja, um, sura ni ya And thank you. That's how I knew what I was supposed to do. Na asante, hivyo ndivyo nilivyojua kile ninastahili kuhubiri. It says but ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon ye and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth in a, 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 go ahead if you want to do this father inasema lakini mtapokea nguvu akiisha kuajilia juu yenu roho mtakatifu nanyi mtakuwa mashahidi wangu katika Yerusalemu na katika Uyahudi wote na Samaria na hata mwisho wa nchi verse 9 and when he had spoken these things While they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Mstari wa tisa, akiisha kusema hayo walipokuwa wakitazama akainuliwa wingu likampokea kutoka machoni pao. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel. Walipokuwa wakikaza macho mbinguni yeye alipokuwa akienda zake tazama watu wawili wakasimama katika karibu nao wenye nguo nyeupe. Which also said Ye men of Galilee Why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Wakisema enyi watu wa Galilaya mbona mmesimama mkitazama mbinguni huyu Yesu aliyechukuliwa kutoka kwenu kwenda juu mbinguni atakuja jinsi hiyo hiyo mlivyomuona akienda zake mbinguni. Niko katika ujumbe mwingine wa ujumbe huu. Why are we sitting around? Kwa nini tumeketi pale? Enjoying the presence of God. Tukifurahia uwepo wa Mungu. When our neighbors and friends Wakati marafiki zetu na majirani zetu are dying and going to hell. Wanakufa wakienda kuzimu. Where the worm is quenched not. Na ulimwengu haujafikiwa na injili. And the flame never stops. Na moto hauwezi kukoma kule. And people are forever tortured. Na watu wanateswa wana huko. Where is our burden? 
mzigo wetu uko wapi for them kwao we all have had miracles happen to us sisi wote tumekuwa na miujiza imetutendekea if you get up in the sunshine and it's a miracle ikiwa uliamka asubuhi ya leo ni muujiza if you get up and you're privileged to come to a nice building like this for church ikiwa uliamka asubuhi ukawezeshwa kuingia katika mjengo mzuri kama huu kanisa you're privileged uko na fursa kuu i know i've been out Ninajua kwa maana nimekuwa kule nje. Nimeuingia katika nyumba zingine nikawaza ili nyumba itaweza kuendelea kusimama nikiendelea kuhubiri. Hii ni maridadi. So what are you doing with your testimony? Unafanyia nini ushuhuda wako? Who have you brought to church? Umeleta nani kanisani? Who have you prayed through in your living room to the gift of the Holy Ghost? Umeombea nani kule nyumbani ili aupokee Roho Mtakatifu? Who have you taught a Bible study to? Umefunza sfunzo la Biblia kwa nani? Who have you reached out and helped? Umefikia nani ukamsaidia? If you have two coats? Ikiwa uko na koti mbili? My Bible tells me you to give one away. Biblia inasema chukua moja upeane. Yes. Most people around here are poor. Watu wengi mahali hapa ni ni maskini. But poor is a state of mind. Lakini kuwa maskini ni hali ya mawazo yako. Get yourself out of it. Jiondoe katika hiyo hali. It is well. Iko sawa. It is well. Kila kitu kiko sawa. And when you get that attitude changed. Na unapopata huo mwenendo ukibadilishwa Marafiki zako jamii zako watatambua. Na watataka kile uko nacho. Watakuchia. Kwa sababu hawatasubiri wewe uende kwao. Uniamini? I ride on planes and trains and all kinds of things. Nimetembea nimepaa kwenye ndege, kwenye gari la moshi na magari na vitu mbalimbali nimesafiri navyo. Na nimekaa kando ya watu ambao ni wanawazimu wa aina mbalimbali. Wengine hata ni mapepo. And I did. I had a demon sit in front of me one time on a plane. Na kuna wakati mmoja nilikuwa na pepo limeketi mbele yangu. Did I cower in fear? Niliogopa? You see I've been the destiny. Nimekuwa katika milango ya kujaribiwa. Why am I going to fear what the devil? Kwa nini niogope shetani? He can't do nothing unless God allows it. Hawezi kufanya chochote kwangu isipokuwa Mungu amruhusu. I refused. Ninakataa kumuogopa. So I stood. Kwa hivyo nilisimama. On that back row of that plane. Katika hiyo ndege. And I handed a book, one of my books. Na nikachukua kimoja ya vitabu vyangu. To the lady beside me. Kwa ule dada alikuwa ameketi kando yangu. Na nikaanza kuongea kuhusu wema wa Mungu. Machozi yalianza kutiririka. Mungu akamguza kwenye hiyo ndege. Popote unapoenda. Kwenye mashamba unaweza kuwa na mchana wa maombi. Haleluya. Haleluya. Unaweza kuwa na mtembeo wa Mungu wewe peke yako. So what's it going to take? Kwa hivyo itachukua nini? What's it going to take for us to make room in our world? Itakukarimu nini kufanya uh, chumba katika maisha yetu? For God's man or God's woman to speak to us. Ile mtumishi wa Mungu anene na sisi. For God to speak to us through his word. Au Mungu anene na sisi kupitia neno lake. Unajua Mungu anaweza kuongea na wewe muda unapoendelea kwenda. Kama huyu mwanamke mshinami hata hatumjui jina lake. Lakini ametajwa mara mbili. Mwanamke mshunami. Alitengeneza nafasi. Na alijua cha kufanya. Alijua cha kufanya akaweka kitanda, akaweka meza, akaweka kiti. She got him something around. She took care of all of his needs. Akashughulikia mahitaji ya mtumishi wa Mungu. And then he gave her her dream. Na akampatia ndoto yake. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. So what's it going to take? Kwa hivyo itagarimu nini? You wonder why you're struggling? Je, unashangaa kwa nini unamenyana? Why are you going through the seven years of famine? Kwa nini umekaa katika hiyo miaka saba ya njaa? 
Perhaps she never made room for the prophet. Pengine hukutengeneza nafasi kwa sababu ya nabii. It's time to make some room. Ni wakati utengeneze nafasi. And when you make room. Na wakati unapotengeneza nafasi. The famine will still come. Njaa bado itakuja. But you will be protected. Lakini utalindwa. And by famine I'm talking spiritual. Na kwa njaa ninaongea kuhusu mambo ya kiroho. Naongea kuhusu hali zozote ambazo zinaweza kuja katika maisha yako. Hii ni Easter ya tatu au ya nne nimenena hapa Afrika. Ah, nimenena mara, mara kadhaa. Nilitaka kuwa nyumbani. Kwa sababu hakuna mtu angekuwekwa isipokuwa mimi. So I scheduled myself to work as hard as I could work every holiday. Nika nikajipangia ratiba nifanye kazi jinsi niwezavyo kila muhula walikizo. I wouldn't have time. Ili niwe na muda to nurse happy families together. Kuleta jamii pamoja. Because I was alone. Kwa sababu nilikuwa na peke yangu. Hakuna mtu alitaka kitu kuhusiana na mimi. Lakini unaona Mungu alikuwa ananiandaa. Alikuwa ananibadilisha nimweke kwanza. Easter, na hii Easter Ningekuwa nyumbani pamoja na jamii yangu. Lakini unaona uhusiano wangu na Mungu haubadiliki kulingana na baraka zangu. Mungu akisema enda nitafunga virago vyangu na nitaenda. Unifanye nilie kwa sababu ninajua nitakosa nini. Lakini nimeitwa kwa kusudi. So today, what are you a witness of? Kwa hivyo leo wewe ni shahidi wa nini? Wewe ni shahidi wa, wa uh, neema ya Mungu? Are you a witness of his glory? Wewe ni shahidi wa utukufu wa Mungu? Or are you a witness of everything that can go wrong? Au wewe ni shahidi wa vile vitu tu vitaenda visiwe sambamba? Life happens to all of us. Maisha hutendeka kwetu sote. It's not what happens to us. Sio kile kinatutendekea. It's how we allow to react. Ni jinsi vile tunajiruhusu kufanya. So how should you react? Je, unastahili kujichukulia aje? At this point you should know what I'm what I'm expecting you to say. Kwa wakati huu ninatarajia unajua kile natarajia kusema. It is well with my soul. Ni sawa na nafsi yangu. I may not be able to stand up. Naweza kuwa sina nguvu ya kusimama. Because I'm lying in a hospital bed. Kwa, kwa sababu nimelala kwenye kitanda cha hospitali. Niko katika elevator. Niko, kwe, na, niko kwenye mashine. Na waliita jamii yangu kusema kwa heri. Say, Lakini ningesema well Iko sawa na nafsi yangu. Hata ingewa singeweza kuinua hata kidole kimoja. Ningeinua kidole kimoja hicho niabudu katika jina la Yesu. And I'll praise him. Na nitamsifu. Because never will a rock cry out in my place. Kwa sababu hakuna siku nitaruhusu mwamba ulie badala yake. And I need to end. I want that white robe. You know why? Nataka lile vazi nyeupe na unajua nini? Kwa sababu nitatenda nitaruka. Nitaruka nikimsifu Yesu nikizunguka kiti cha enzi. Hallelujah. Siwezi kusema yote kwa kuwa amekuwa mwema kwangu zaidi. Kama uko hapa unahitaji nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. Kama uko hapa unahitaji Roho Mtakatifu. Kwanza unastahili utubu. Na ikiwa uko hapa na ulipigana na mtu kabla ya kuja kanisani, unastahili kutubu pia. Tusimame sisi wote. I'm going to lead all of us in a prayer of repentance. Nitaongoza sisi wote katika maombi ya toba. If we want to see miracle signs and wonders. Kwa tunataka kuona miujiza na ishara. Our hearts have to be clear. Mioyo yetu lazima iwe safi before God. Mbele za Mungu. So we're going to pray a prayer of repentance. Kwa hivyo tutaomba ombi la toba. Lord Jesus, first of all I love you. And I thank you for your blessings on me. Bwana Yesu kwanza ninakupenda na ninaomba ombi la baraka kwako. Now God. Sasa Mungu, I'm in need. Ninahitaji. 
I need you to forgive me God. Naitaji unisamehe Mungu. If I've done anything I shouldn't have done. Ikiwa nimefanya kitu ambacho sikustahili kufanya. If I've thought thoughts I shouldn't have thought. Ikiwa nimewaza mawazo ambayo singewaza. If I've said things. Kama nimesema mambo. If I've hurt someone. Ikiwa nimekuwaza mtu. I need you to forgive me. Naitaji unisamehe. God forgive me. Mungu nisamehe. Purge me with hyssop that I may be pure. Nisafishe kwa hisopo ili niwe msafi. Purge my soul of God. Safisha nafsi yangu e Mungu. Make me clear. Nifanye kwa msafi so that I can walk into the supernatural. Ili niweze kutembea katika elimu ya kiroho na wewe. Be your witness. Niwe mshahidi wako. Telling people of the great things I witnessed you. Kiambia watu kuhusu mambo ambayo nimeona ukifanya. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. Amen. Amen. Okay? Now we've repented. Sasa tumetubu. Now if you're here and you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Kama uko hapa na una kipawa cha Roho Mtakatifu. Some people get afraid of it. Wakati watu wengine huogopa. When you come up and you raise your hands. Unapokuja na uinue mikono yako. All you have to do is start saying I love you Jesus. Kile unastahili tu kufanya ni kusema Yesu nakupenda. Hallelujah. Lord please fill me. Yesu tafadhali nitaze. Ni kipawa. Thank you God for the Holy Ghost. Asante Mungu kwa Roho Mtakatifu. And then you'll start speaking in a language you've never learned. Na utaanza kunena katika lugha ambayo hujaijifunza. You see what it is is it's peace. Unaona kile kilicho ni amani. It's joy. Ni furaha. And it's happiness. Na ni furaha upendo. Because when my husband died, kwa sababu mume wake alipoaga, I was able to dance. Aliweza kucheza. The a couple, two days after I got home in the church where we would hold his funeral. Siku mbili baada ya kufika nyumbani mahali ambapo wangekuwa na mazishi yake. As we held his funeral, wakati walipokuwa na matanga yake, I was on the front pew. Alikuwa ameketi katika kiti cha mbele. Na mikono yake ilikuwa juu. And I was worshiping my king. Alikuwa anamwabudu mfalme wake. Because I needed to send a message to God. Kwa sababu alistahili kutuma ujumbe kwa Mungu. I let him know. Alitaka Mungu ajue. The all I didn't understand. Ya kwamba kile singeelewa. My relationship with him had not changed. Uhusiano wangu na yeye haukuwa umebadilika. That's how you need to be. Ndivyo inavyostahili kukuwa. I am not perfect. Mimi si mkamilifu. I make many mistakes. Nafanya makosa mengi. Je, unafikiria wewe si mzuri ya kutosha kupata Roho Mtakatifu? Hakuna mmoja wetu aliye mzuri zaidi. Lakini Mungu hajali kuhusu hiyo. Yeye ataweka vazi nyeupe kwetu. Atachukua dhambi zako mbaya. Atazitupa kwenye uh, ziwa la sahau. Kwa sababu unapopokea Roho Mtakatifu. Basi mchungaji atakupeleka kwenye maji. Na atakubatiza katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Na utakapotoka kwenye maji hayo. Umebadilishwa. Wewe ni mtu mpya kutoka wakati huo. Wewe utashughulikia mambo mengine ambayo ulifanya. Lakini kutoka wakati huo kwenda mbele wewe ni kiumbe kipya. Na sehemu nzuri ya hiyo ni is we all make mistakes. Kwamba sisi wote tunafanya makosa. I'm not giving you a uh, reason to do wrong things. Sikupatii sababu ya kufanya makosa. But I'm telling you that if you do. Lakini nakuambia ikiwa utafanya makosa. All you have to do is go find yourself a place to pray. Kila utafanya tu ni kupata nafasi ya kwenda kuomba. And ask God to forgive you. Na uombe Mungu akusamehe. That's it. Ni hivyo. You may have to fix it. Uenda utarekebisha mambo lakini Mungu amekusamehe. Na jaribu kumalizia kila kitu kabla tuleta watu kuja kuomba. Tunastahili kupata wale wanataka Roho Mtakatifu wakuje kwanza. Okay? And then so, I want those that have a physical need in their body. Alafu nataka wale ambao wako na hitaji katika mili yao. Waje. And then I want those to come na pia nataka wenye ukuja wengine ambao wako na shida ya msongamano katika mawazo yao na uenda uwezi kuzuia mawazo yako na ikiwa unaogopa kuja kwa sababu mtu atasema kitu 
Unaweza kuuliza. In the car on the way here I was praying. Tulipokuwa katika gari tukija nilikuwa naomba. And the devil attacked my mind. Na shetani akapigana na mawazo yangu. And I rebuked him in Jesus name. Na nikamkemea katika jina la Yesu. I put him in his place. Nikamweka mahali pake. And I cast the blood over my mind. Na nikaomba damu juu ya mawazo yangu. So that I could continue to pray. Ili ningeweza kuendelea kuomba. Our God Mungu wangu anaweza kufanya chochote. All we have to do is learn how to say it's well. Kila tutafanya tu ni kusema yote iko sawa. Haleluya. Yote yako sawa. Haijalishi unapitia nini. Haijalishi yale magumu unayopitia. Unaweza kusema mambo yote yako sawa. Haleluya. Inua mikono yako tu msifu Mungu. Wakati huu ninainua mikono yangu ninamsifu Mungu ninamwambia yote yako sawa. Wakati huu ninataka kumwambia Mungu ya kwamba hakuna kitu kitakuja katikati ya uhusiano wangu na yeye. Kwa sababu mambo yote yako sawa. Na wewe unaweza kuinua mikono yako pia useme mambo yote yako sawa. Kwa sababu tunamtumikia Mungu ambaye anaweza yote. Katika china la Yesu Kristo. Na tunapo 